And then all of a sudden, I noticed, you know, there was a little whirlwind, you know, coming towards me. And then uh, uh, something, uh, there's something uh, dirt, you know, uh, some uh, uh, dry uh, leaves. But then it's something that fell a little piece of paper, you know, something like this. It was like this, you know, very, very small, very, very small like that, yeah, something like that. And then it fell under my foot like this, it fell. So I pick it up, you know, no, no just, uh, just to open it. And then I, when I opened it, I read, you know, I read, I said, Ultraman, I said, Ultraman Manpower Service, do you want to work in Canada? Nanny housekeeper. And I got, I saw this address, you know, Toronto, Ontario. So I was, I got goosebumps, and then I said, I have to go home, you know, I, you know, I was shaking. I didn't even know if this is an old uh, newspaper or what, but when I saw it's Canada, I was just talking to my friend the last month, you know, during, when it's my, our day off, about this uh, Canada. So I was, you know, I was shaking and I went home. Emma applied and a month later received an overseas call. Yes, sir, you know, yes, sir, because I'm not good to speak English, you know. So I, said, I was shaking, yes, sir, yes, yes, uh, yes I got your um, uh, letter and there's an employer who wanted to uh, sponsor you. Do you really want to work in Canada? That's what he asked. Yes, sir, I said, yes, sir, I want to work in Canada because I have, uh, I have, I am an, I am a, a widow and I have three children. I want to support my children. And then he said, okay, uh, are you Filipina? He asked me, you know, and I said, yes, sir, I'm Filipino. Eh, Filipino ako eh. No. So when I heard that he's Filipino and I, I talk in Tagalog because it's so hard for me to speak in English. Sir, kuya, kun, please tulungan mo naman ako. Kuya, ay, gusto ko po makaroon ng trabaho kasi meron po akong anak na tatlo. Ako lang pong bumubuhay. Emma got the job, but she had another problem. Her monthly take-home pay for two years was only $50, and that she had regularly sent home for her children's expenses. Where was she now to get the money to fly to Canada? So she confided in her friend, whose reaction was typical of the magnanimity of the Filipino heart. Huh, I have already visa, but I don't have ticket. You know, what will I do? I cannot go to Canada because I don't have money. So she said to me, okay, Emma, this is what I'm going to do. This is what we do. I will borrow money from my employer and I will buy your ticket. But you promise me you have to get me a job there. So uh, there was a, a total uh, trust that she did for me. And then I said, yes, I am going. When I go to Canada, I will help you. So when I was able to go to Canada, I help, I really help her. I paid the ticket back, you know, and uh, I also paid the placement, the, age, the placement fee. She arrived in Kingston, Canada in May of 1986. Again, she was blessed with a good employer. On her first day off, she went to the park with another Filipina. While seated on a bench, an old man walking his dog approached them. And then he said, are you Filipina? Oh yes, we are Filipina. I am Filipino too. Oh, it's nice that to meet Filipino here. And he said to me, uh, you know, I have a Philippine, I have a, a daughter who is single. And uh, do you want to come to my house so I can introduce you to my uh, daughter? And then I said, oh my gosh, I said, let's go Mila, let's go Mila, because maybe they have food, maybe they have Filipino food so we can eat uh, rice, I said. And then so we, uh, we accepted the invitation. So when we went there, we, I was so happy because uh, the father of uh, Sol Gaviola was preparing us uh, Filipino food. Sol Gaviola worked as a medical technologist in the hospital of Kingston, Ontario. A very kind and caring person, she and her father would invite Filipino contract workers to their home on weekends, feed them Filipino food, and bring them to churches and the various Catholic shrines. They became close friends. Sol was like an older sister and guide, and over the years, Emma became an accepted member of the family. Then in 1991, they went to the Fatima Shrine in Youngstown, New York, 
to attend a special mass for the Filipino community. Near the gift shop, she saw a little door with a sign that said, this way to the old chapel. And when I was there inside, I saw this man, man standing by the crucifix like this, you know, he's, he's um, uh, as if he was uh, praying. So he was there st uh, standing also, and I prayed, I said my uh, prayer, and then I went to, pew, to the pew, and I knelt down. He knelt down on the other side, you know, at the end of the pew. And I was uh, looking on the Blessed Mother, and like uh, I was not praying, but maybe it's my heart who's praying because I just uh, I cried. Tears was uh, already falling, you know, in my t on my uh, uh, face, you know. And then I was like, I just I felt something, you know, like there was a little breeze, you know. It was in the the you know the chapel was closed, you know. There's no. No, uh, no open no windows, you know. I felt this uh, a small uh, little breeze, you know, coming towards me, you know. And then some, you know, like hand, you know, a warm, gentle hand, you know, touched my face, you know. And I felt, uh, I smelled that beautiful fragrance, so strong, very, very strong, that it made me fall, you know, like I was falling and I was falling and I was falling, you know, and I was like tingling sensation, like um, the warm, gentle, that warm inside me. And I was scared because, you know, I was scared and I look, I can still see the the man who was, uh, who was uh, kneeling. When I look at him and to ask help, you know, he disappeared, you know, so, so I was scared and I you know, I stood up like this, you know, and then, and then I cannot, I cannot walk. I want to get out of that room, you know, but I can't walk anymore. It's like I was stuck, you know. So what I did, I knelt, I, I crawled coming out from the chapel. And then my friend was looking for me and she, she had been missing for more than an hour. On hindsight, Emma realized that the man beside her in the little chapel was Jesus. This was the turning point, and almost immediately, her life began to change. You know, when I uh, came out from the chapel, I became uh, like I was so quiet. That after, after uh, we had that beautiful uh, procession, you know, when I look on uh, people, I could feel, you know, there's something that I can feel on these people. Like I said, oh my God, I said, I'm so sad for her, you know. She, she, she's uh, not feeling good, I said. And then I say something again to the other people. Oh my God, you know, she had a problem on her back. <laughs> so what's happening to me? How come? What's happening to me? Why I know her problem? I said. And then the woman came to me, you know, because the, um, they were walking and walking. And I said, Mom, you have a problem on your back. I said, Oh yes, I know. How did you know that? You know, how did you know that I have a problem on my back? And I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know.